today, I'm going to talk about the word today. Hebrews 4, he says, again, he limiteth a certain day. How do you limit a certain day? It means it's bringing it down to a certain point today. He says, saying in David, we know that David, <laughs> Jesus is the son of David. He's the son of Abraham. So all these things link together. Saying in David today, after so long time, as it is said today, if you hear his voice, harden not your hearts. Now, there's a day that's limited to a certain point and David prophesied it and here it is in fulfillment and it's bringing everything to a certain point where you can actually hear the voice. My word, the voice was on the waters, the voice was in the garden, the voice was through the prophets, the voice was in the spirit, in the sun and now there is a time period today. 2 Peter 1.20, knowing first that no prophecy of scripture is of any private interpretation. For the prophecy came not in, in the old time by the will of man, but by holy men of God. They spake as they were moved by the Holy Spirit. Our doctrines are not going to change God's purposes in the word. So men have had many wrong doctrines, but the problem is here. It's the carnal mind that is enmity with God. And we, we get that in Romans. He says it clear. The carnal mind, the natural mind is enmity with God. And it cannot understand the purposes of God. Now the word is the place where the spirit purposes comes right into the natural language. And we can actually read it and understand it. But when you read it with a carnal mind, this is crazy. You cannot get it. The Bible is where all the realms come together. Now, in the beginning, God created realms. There was the spirit realm, which is eternal, which was the abode of God. And then he created heaven and earth. And heaven and earth was in unity and his spirit was there. That's why it is called Eden. But then because man lost that Man stepped out of that three realms. He stepped out of that place. Now another realm came in, and that is the pit. That is when you die. Because God said, if you eat, you will die. So there was four realms. Four is natural, and three is godly. So what God did, he sent himself, and he came, and he brought these realms together in Christ again. And he dealt with the pit so now you do not have to go down to the pit. But if you do not accept it, you might land yourself in the lake of fire, which is the second death. We need to read the word with the, the spirit. Where do you get the spirit? He says, the words that I speak, they are spirit and life. This is why Isaiah says, we must explain the Bible <laughs> with the Bible. You can't separate that. So Right through the word, we have this number seven. <laughs> seven is when God is working with man. It's four man, three God. And that brings us to the fullness of what God's dealing with man is. The Bible is supernatural where the spirit and the natural come together. And it has a awesome language that we must understand. Now, how in the world are we going to understand this language? He says in 1 Corinthians 2.22, he says, God has filled us with the Spirit. He put His Spirit in our heart. And, <laughs> and you know what He did? He, he doesn't, it can't go like that. He sealed it. So it's bigger than these things. It's something that God so loved the world that he gave his son. And whosoever believe will not perish, but have everlasting life. Now you will have everlasting life, but you're not going to see the kingdom here unless you enter that place. So there's a big difference on just repenting and stepping into the purposes and promises of God. Today is a time concept. And everything we know in the world is bound to time. But time has a beginning. And we have to go right back to Genesis 1-4. It says, 
in the beginning, God said. Now, you read it all over, Galatians, John, Ephesians, Hebrews, that he says, God created everything. There was a beginning. This is why in the book of Revelation, three times, he says, I am the beginning and the end. Note, he didn't have a beginning and an end. He is the order of Melchizedek. No father, no mother, no beginning, no end. God with God. So um, Melchizedek is literally the manifestation of God in the natural. And he, what he, why he manifests is because he will not leave his creation. So in Genesis, God made the beginning and there was seven days of creation. Now, the first time he made the sun and the moon and the stars. Okay, can I say when he created time, it was built into the creation week as a guarantee. So this is how it's going to work. And when he created time, he said, and God said, let there be lights in the firmament of heaven and to divide the day from night and let them be for signs and for seasons, for days and years. Now, whoa, this is where we pick up the different divisions of time. He says, there's going to be the sun and the moon and the stars. And they will be to divide the day and the night. And we know, come on guys, if you're older than three, you know what's night and you know what's day. And there's a definite separation between it. And oh, the science and how God did it is just awesome. But we know it's a division. And what happens is your whole life is in cycles. You have a daily cycle. Um, if you fly too much, you get jet lag. It means you're going out of your cycle of sleeping and being awake. And it is disastrous. So there is a division between day and night for a purpose because it actually inaugurates the cycles, cycles on the earth. You see, God does not have a beginning and an end. A beginning and an end is there it starts, there it stops. God doesn't have it. He is the beginning and the end. So he is above it. And he is that point of beginning and end, beginning and end, beginning and end. And besides all the water cycles and heat cycles and season cycles, there is a cycle in every man's life that he comes to a point where he can make a choice to live for God or not live for God. And God keeps bringing us back to that point because he says the sun and the moon and the stars will kick in these seasons. There will be seasons and there will be um, days and years. And we know days and years are the natural. But what about this that he says there will be signs? This is in Genesis 1 verse 14. They will be for signs, seasons, days and years. And I believe the signs is the spiritual time that God works into the natural time. Because he says in Matthew, he says, you can read the signs of the times. It's funny that you don't read the signs that you are in now. Now, the problem today is we can't read the signs of the times. We, we see COVID and we think it's the end of the world and we don't understand what's the end of the world. Do we under, even understand what is world? When the Bible talks about the end of the world, it was a specific world. And the Spirit is working these things out.